Joining me now from Memphis, Tennessee, is John McAfee, cybersecurity expert, founder and developer of the famed McAfee antivirus software, and now also a possible 2016 libertarian presidential candidate. He recently made a lot of news claiming that he can intervene in the U.S. versus Apple controversy regarding unlocking the iPhone that once belonged to the identified terrorist in the San Bernardino attack in December last year. Let's get into it as John joins me, as we said, from uh, Memphis, Tennessee. How are you going to help solve that dilemma? Well, I don't think I am, Larry. The FBI has not contacted me, nor do I think that they will. Uh, I made that statement to, to um, bring to the attention that the FBI does not really want to crack one phone. Um, the FBI wants the master code to all Apple iPhones. Uh, and if it gets that, the next thing they'll be doing is knocking on Google's store, and Google has 95% of the world market for smartphones. And we will all be spied on, not just by the FBI, but by our enemies, by hackers, because once you put a backdoor into a, a system, it cannot be contained. We've learned that over and over and over again. The entire world, the Chinese, the Russians, and every black hat hacker on the planet will have it, and our bank accounts will be vacated, we will lose our credit cards, our identities, it will be chaos, sir. So you, you, you think Apple's right? Apple is absolutely right. We, we live in an age, Larry, where, where our government is completely illiterate in cybersecurity. We're a good 20 years behind the Chinese and the Russians, and the next war is not going to be fought with nuclear weapons. It will, it, it will be a cyber war of so vast devastation that it will be unimaginable. You said that you could unlock the San Bernardino terrorist phones for the FBI without upsetting the rest of it. How would you do that? Well, there are certain people in the world, Larry, and uh, I'm not saying that I'm among them, but I certainly know many who are, who have very unique talents. There are mathematicians who can multiply two 100-digit numbers in their heads and instantly give you the answer. We have Bach and Mozart. Uh, who cannot be trained. These are people with innate superhuman talents. Hackers also have these talents. Uh, I, I know many of them. Uh, I promise you that, in fact, I've, I've, I've said, if, if we can't do it within three weeks, I will eat my shoe on the Neil Cavuto show. <laughs> are, are privacy and security mutually exclusive? No, absolutely not, sir. Um, first of all, what is privacy? We, do, we don't understand that that hundreds of times per day we exercise that right to privacy. When you buy something from the grocery store, you don't tell your most intimate details to the checkout clerk. You talk about the weather or the price of eggs. Um, with some of your close friends, you may reveal more. With your spouse, you may tell your spouse everything, uh, unless you're having an affair, and you might choose not to tell even your spouse that. So we exercise privacy hundreds of times per day. And without that right, our society would absolutely cave in. Can you imagine what would happen if everyone knew everything about everybody else? We're very judgmental people. We are imperfect creatures. We, we have to have privacy in order to keep the glue of society together. Trump called for a war against Apple. What would you think of that? Well, Trump has called for war against everything. I mean, Trump <laughs> wants to build a wall between our nation and the nation of the finest tunnel builders on the planet. Think about this. I mean, <laughs> El Chapo escaped from prison in a mile-long tunnel on a motorcycle on rails that had uh, water pumps and ventilation in it. Uh, the Mexicans can tunnel through anything. I don't care what you want to do from a wall. It's an absurd thing to do. So he has called for war against everything. But the war against Apple is the most absurd. Because really, it shows that he does not understand to any degree what cybersecurity is and what the effects of putting backdoors into software can be. Why do you want to run for president? Because sir, the greatest problem facing America today is cyber war. It is on the horizon, Larry. Already, two teenagers took out the entire country of Ukraine's power for one day using a 25-year-old piece of software with 17 lines of code. Can you imagine, sir, what the Chinese can do to us? They have the capability now to completely disrupt our electrical power supply permanently. And what does that mean? No communications, uh, no food delivery, uh, no production of, of all of our necessities, 
A, a report to Congress last year said that 90% of the American population would perish in a cyber war with China. And you tell me who is running today who can fix this problem. All right, you mentioned smart people. There are smart people everywhere, and there are the Mozarts in the box. Aren't there also smart people on our side that can stop this? Right, but they're, they're not within the government, Larry. Because these smart people, the, the, the truly talented hackers, the truly talented cybersecurity specialists, they have 14-inch purple mohawks and pierced ears and tattooed faces, and they demand to smoke weed while they're working. Well, who is going to hire them within the government? Yes, we have them, and fortunately, they are on our side. We are not utilizing them, and we have to if we are to survive as a nation. This is an absolute necessity. We have to learn that we cannot judge by appearance. We cannot judge because someone thinks differently or acts differently from us. We recently had the last libertarian presidential candidate, Gary Jans Johnson, on the show. Would he be your chief rival to get the nomination this year? Well, I, you know, I, I just debated Gary Johnson two days ago. He's a very nice gentleman, uh, a, a very nice gentleman. Uh, twice he's run and gotten less than 1% of the vote. We have to have someone who can win, Larry. We really do. Um, you know, I'm seven years old. I am not doing this in order to make a statement or to change somebody's opinion. I don't have that luxury. Uh, I'm not wasting a year of my life making a statement. I'm doing this to win. And, and one of the things I've learned, Larry, is that the human spirit is indomitable and infinite in its capacities, if you know yourself. And if you have the talents and put those talents to the, to the direct use. Uh, I intend to win this. I really do. And you may say, well, that's absurd. Well, you want to know what's absurd? Watch the Republican debates. They're making fun of each other's putting on makeup, for heaven's sake. We have a country filled with problems that deserve a compassionate look and an intelligent analysis, and I do not see this. Everybody agrees with half of liberals like half of libertarianism, conservatives like half of libertarianism. What is libertarianism? Can you, can you nutshell it for me? Yes, sir. Uh, libertarianism is a very simple philosophy that's based upon personal freedom and personal privacy. Uh, the basic tenets are keep your contracts well, or, or keep your agreements. There is no other way to live. I found that out. Uh, that personal freedom and personal fri privacy are paramount. And I found that out, but I've been incarcerated a number of times. I am a civil disobedience person. Uh, and I fully believe that we own our own bodies, and we may do with them as we choose. And because I have acted that way, I have been incarcerated many times. Well, there was one exception when I was incarcerated for stupidity. But other than that, <laughs> it's civil disobedience because I believe we get to do with our bodies as we choose. The, the libertarians believe that our government is too overburdened and, and inefficient. Uh, it believes that, that we have problems here at home that must be addressed. Uh, they're very simple principles, which really all Americans believe in, Larry. It, all Americans. It does in we favor. We cannot harm another person, and we cannot harm another person, nor can we take the things that they own. We all believe this. this is, yeah. These are the fundamental tenets of libertarianism. It does in favor of vast armies abroad, right? I'm sorry? It does not favor vast military elsewhere. No, it, it doesn't. Larry, we, we're, we have problems here at home. We really do. So how, um, would libertarians, and our military, how would libertarians approach ISIS? Well, who created ISIS, Larry? Isn't this a fundamental question? I mean, we keep bombing people. If, if you were living in the Middle East and a bomb destroyed your neighbors next door and your friends and killed your brother and your father and possibly your mother, and you could do nothing, you are, you are completely helpless against these invisible things that were being controlled by people halfway around the world. You would be angry. You would be frustrated. You would want to strike out. And so they do. Or we just strike back at them. We created terrorism, Larry, by interfering in the affairs of nations that we had absolutely no business interfering in. And we did it for purely economic reasons. We have to take at least a small part of that responsibility. We do, sir. And, and the, the, the problem with ISIS shows a complete failure in our national defense. It does, because we are putting so much money into military hardware and nothing into cyber security and cyber awareness, which could have told us easily what was happening before it actually happened. So this is the problem, Larry. 
we have to fix it by, by, by coming home and fixing ourselves. This is the truth. Will you guess with us many times? Oh, abso abso absolutely. I, I would love to come back, Larry. I, I, th I think you're a fine gentleman and, and an honest person and, and a gracious man. I, I always enjoy talking to such people. Thank you, John. Yes, sir.